Hello and welcome to today's talk, Monday the 28th of November. Now I'm going to be reporting on a couple of papers from Italy today that show two important things. The first is the large amount of protection that people get after natural infection, natural immunity. And we'll be giving some data on that. And the second important point is this study looks through the whole pandemic and sees a progressively decreasing level of severity, less hospitalizations, less intensive care admissions, less deaths as time has gone on. And I believe I'm going to give a, some reasoning for why that should continue. So my anxiety levels about COVID are much reduced, although it hasn't gone away by any means. So this is the paper here. Now, this is actually a preprint and it came out in July. So I'm expecting this to come out any day now, but I wanted to talk about it because I think it's quite important to get this kind of um, international perspective. The, the Italian uh, scientists and doctors and academics seem to be somewhat uh, less constrained, shall we say, than those in um, the United Kingdom and the United States and other possible countries that could be mentioned. Australia and Canada, for example. Um, so it's good to get this uh, more international perspective. Now, the, the decline of COVID se severity and lethality, lethality is the term that they use, we would normally say uh, mortality, but it's the same thing. Over two years of the pandemic, 20 to 40 fold reduction during the period of dominance of Omicron compared to the initial acute phase. So Omicron, uh, in a lot of ways, has been fortuitous in that it's generated an awful lot of immunity, while it hasn't made people as sick as the previous waves. Now, um, let's look at some figures straight off. Now, phase one, we'll, we'll show the phases, but they divide it into five phases, basically. Phase one is the Wuhan virus phase, what they call the ancestral virus phase. Now, what they've done here is really quite clever. They've actually looked at the number of infections as opposed to the number of cases. And they've used some clever epidemiological and seriological data to do that, combined with some mathematical adjustments. So they're looking at actually the number of infections, what they're calling the attack rate, the proportion of people that the infection is attacking by causing them to become infected. So... Um, this initial phase, things really were quite bad because, remember, the population was completely naive to the virus then. 5.4% uh, probability of hospitalisation of, of actual infections. Probability of intensive care admission, 0.65%. Uh, probability of death, 2.2%. Now, this is for the population uh, as a whole, of course, and it's greatly disproportionately affecting older people. But that is still a really high death rate when the population was completely immunologically uh, naive to this virus. And as we'll see, that is certainly no longer the case. Uh, phase five, the, the Omicron phase, just jumping forward, the probability of hospitalization down 95.1%, so really plummeted. In risk and the probability of ICU admission down at 97.3%. Again, great reduction in risk. Probability of death down by 97.5% reduction in risk. And what they actually found was there's a gradual reduction. So phase one was the Wuhan type. Phase two was the second wave of the Wuhan type. Then there was the uh, alpha, then there was the delta, then there was the Omicron. And as time's gone on, the risk has gone down progressively. Now, we do expect to see this with viruses, but it has gone down really quickly as a result of the Omicron. Omicron has almost sort of been an accelerator of the herd immunity, or not the herd immunity, but the, the, the natural immunity process. We're not going to reach herd immunity because we're endemic. That was hoped for, but we're not going to get it in the next decade or two. So we see this great reduction in risk of hospitalizations, ICU admissions and deaths as time has gone on. So pretty good news. And we expect this to continue. We really expect this trend to continue. But I'll be showing you why I expect this trend to continue. Now, um, using epidemiological and genomic surveillance data, that's how they got these figures to estimate the actual number of infections. Uh, 
Now, the team are very modest about this. They do see, say these are estimates. But uh, looking at the data, they are pretty convincing uh, estimates. And they're from very senior academics from all over Italy, who, as we say, don't seem to be operating under the same constraints as, as certain other countries. So estimating the daily infections in Italy in the first two years of the pandemic, the attack rate. Now, this is really quite interesting. What they have here, th this is their graphic of the pandemic, the way they've mapped it out. So phase one was the Wuhan ancestral virus. Phase two was the Wuhan ancestral virus. Then the alpha, then the delta, then the Omicron. Now, sadly, the data here is only collected up until uh, about the 22nd of February. But we do show the five phases there. And this solid line here is the R value. And uh, this line here is their estimate of the number of uh, infections. Daily SARS coronavirus 2 confirmed infections. So that's the sort of um, graphic that they're using. Now, the attack rate, um, as we know, is the amount of people that are uh, infected from the vulnerable uh, population. Now, ascertaining the, the number of infections. So what they found here was phase one, when there was a lot of non-pharmaceutical interventions, now, as, as you know, the non-pharmaceutical interventions are things like wearing masks, social distancing, hand washing, all of these lockdown measures that uh, were employed at the time. So they, there was quite a lot of those around during phase one in Italy, and the attack rate was 2.8%. This means 2.8% of the Italian population were infected by the Wuhan original ancestral virus during what they call phase one. So that was the proportion actually infected, the attack rate. Phase two, still the ancestral Wuhan virus. There was less stringent non-pharmaceutical interventions and the attack rate went up to 11.4%. Alpha, mid-February to early July 2021, uh, alpha infected about 10.1% of the population of the whole population of the country. So the attack rate there was 10.1%. Uh, Delta, second half of 2021, progressive relaxation of non-pharmaceutical interventions. Attack rate went up to 73, uh, sorry, 17.3%, gradual increase. But Omicron was the big one. Omicron actually infected 55.1% of the Italian population. So over half of the entire population of Italy were infected with Omicron, regardless of whether they had previous infections, regardless of whether they had vaccination. Very, very high uh, attack rate. But of course, at the same time, um, as uh, causing these infections, it developed a lot of uh, immunity in people, as we're just about to see. So evolution of population susceptibility, the population, uh, how susceptible they were to the virus. Now, as it starts off here, as you would expect, now, the grey is people that are susceptible. So a few people had this ancestral phase, had the ancestral virus here, about 2.5%. So that meant that this other 97.5% here was still vulnerable could still get the infection or was still naive to the infection. And as time went on, more people had the ancestral strain. Now, the orange here is vaccines. So a few people were vaccinated there, but all these people here were still vulnerable. Then by the time the alpha phase came along, it's probably ringing a few bells here, you might remember this, vaccination rates were fairly high. Uh, this was the people that were protected from the original Wuhan virus. This was the people that were protected by the alpha virus, of the alpha strain. This was people protected by vaccination, and this was those still vulnerable. But then as time went on, something really interesting happened. They started, this darker orange here is giving uh, a second dose of vaccine. So that did maintain uh, vaccine protection for a period of time. But this grey area here, this dark grey area here is people that had been vaccinated but were still vulnerable. So all these people in this grey area are still vulnerable. They are still vulnerable to get the, getting the infection. Even although this group here had been vaccinated, they were still vulnerable. What they needed was uh, this additional dose of vaccine here 
But we see that even with the additional dose of vaccine, that's, that's stayed about the same level of protection there for the whole population. And the people with um, only two doses of vaccine uh, were more um, at risk. So they kind of maintained the, um, the resistance there with that extra vaccination. But this is pe these are people that have been vaccinated that were now uh, susceptible again. And these people were uninfected and unvaccinated. But look at this, this big blue bit here. The vast majority, well, the, the, this very large major chunk here of people um, that, are, that are no longer sensitive to the virus... That's because they had uh, Omicron protection. They have protection from the Omicron. Now, we really would love to see similar data from the United States and the United Kingdom. Uh, hint, hint, uh, Office for National Statistics. Hint, hint, Centre for Disease Control. Don't hold your breath. But we do see it on this Italian data. So really quite convincing. Um, the huge amount of protection they're given from Omicron. Now, yeah, yeah, the protection from previous strains is waning, as we know, um, but the Omicron is still there. And of course, Omicron is still circulating. So I suspect I've been exposed to Omicron many times, and every time I'm exposed to it, I get a bit of an extra boost. <laughs> Indeed, the same as I do for thousands of other viruses that I don't even know the names of. Really, why should this be any different? This, this virus, uh, SARS coronavirus 2, hasn't come from Mars. Uh, we, we could debate where it came from, but it's got the same characteristics as all, all, all biological life and all biological entities on Earth. And the immune system reacts to it in the same way. It's just that before we were naive to it, now we're not naive to it. And this shows it very well. So here, very large proportion were completely naive to it. Here, a much smaller proportion were completely naive. And even those that were vaccinated, the vaccine had waned there. Now, there are the keys for that. So you can check that if you uh, want. Of course, you've got the link to the paper. Now, um, th th this is percentage of the population susceptible to SARS coronavirus. So at the end of the first wave, 97.5% still susceptible. February um, 20th, 2022, when they finished collecting data, 13%. We don't know what it is now, but Omicron has been circulated. So in February, so Omicron started, what, December, January, February. So this was just after three months of Omicron. We've now had a year of Omicron. And I suspect that that, uh, susceptibility, that, that, that susceptibility is now down to about 3% rather than 13%, just to guess. Could be completely wrong, but it's certainly going to be a, a lot less than the 13% of the population that are now susceptible. So pretty good news for endemicity, really. By February the 20th, 2022, again, frustratingly early cut off in data, but they do say this, a marked proportion of individuals unprotected against SARS coronavirus to infection can be found among unvaccinated subjects. And that's the direct quote from the Italian paper. It's not saying the vaccines aren't effective. It's saying the vaccine efficacy wanes and it wanes really quite rapidly. But in the Italian situation, a lot of it has been replaced by natural immunity from Omicron, which is the, uh, the good news of this paper. And they clearly say due to waning of vaccine protection. So remember, evolution of severity of lethality Right, probability of, of, of uh, hospitalisation. So they actually give some specific figures and information on this. Um, probability of hospitalisation. So what they have here is this is uh, ancestral wave one. This is ancestral wave two. This is, uh, um, this is alpha and this is uh, delta. And they've blown these up for us so we can see them. So we can see that the risk of hospitalisation... Well, we can see it's plummeting down really quite nicely to Omicron. And then this is the blow up of uh, the, the Omicron here. And we see it's gone down quite substantially, which is good. So um, that is the, uh, yeah, that's, that's the delta there, isn't it? So that's the, that's the alpha, that's the delta. So that was the right order. So it was Wuhan, Wuhan, alpha, delta, 
Omicron is the way uh, it went. Now, um, probable ICU admissions. Um, again, we see Wuhan, Wuhan, Alpha, Delta, Omicron. We see that the risk is going down quite dramatically with time. And there we see the blow ups of those two. And then probability of death. Again, we see a progressive but marked drop off from Wuhan. So even the Wuhan virus was causing some uh, immunity because um, this is pre-vaccination here. So we had the Wuhan, Wuhan, Alpha, Delta and uh, Omicron there. Again, rapid drop offs in the risk of death. And as we say, um, there's no reason to assume that this trend is not continuing, which is good news, of course. Uh, evolution of population susceptibility. So this is the slide we saw before. Um, it's going down quite rapidly. The population that are still susceptible, largely protected by the Omicron there. So what do we make of this? Um, natural post-infection immunity is now the main factor reducing population sensitivity to the virus, according to this data, in the Italian situation. And if this is true in Italy... I think it's probably true in other countries as well, even though we might have not have that data published. But I don't see why it should be true in Italy and completely uh, untrue in the United States and the United Kingdom. Natural post-infection immunity is now the main factor reducing population sensitivity. Uh, vaccination protection is seen to be declining, as the authors clearly uh, show. Uh, because people that have been vaccinated there are still uh, or have returned to being uh, at risk from a viral infection. Omicron natural infection had the largest protective effect. We saw that because it's by far the largest segment on this uh, graphic. Omicron natural infection had the largest protective effect. Repeat exposure to Omicron on subvariants is likely to have the same effect going forward. Uh, do I know this for sure? No, of course not. It hasn't happened yet. Does it make sense based on everything that's happened so far? Yeah, it would seem to make sense. Um, now, non-pharmaceutical interventions will uh, reduce repeat exposures. And if we reduce repeat exposures to Omicron, uh, we're not going to carry on developing more immunity to Omicron and by extension other coronaviruses through cross-immunity. So non-pharmaceutical interventions are going to slow the rate of a natural immunity developing. Non-pharmaceutical interventions will reduce exposure to other respiratory viruses such as respiratory syncytial virus, which unfortunately we're seeing quite a lot of now. So there we go. Um, clear, clear evidence from the Italian data. Um, that the, the vaccine effectiveness is, is waning, that the overall likelihood of hospitalizations, intensive care and deaths is declining rapidly. And we think that's likely to continue going forward. So clear evidence here for the uh, efficacy of natural immunity as the situation gets uh, less severe or that the viral infection becomes less severe. Still some people at risk, of course, but this trend is remarkably encouraging as we go into uh, a few decades, potentially, of uh, endemicity. But um, getting less severe, so as time goes on, uh, less to worry about. We still have to be careful with people that are high risk factors. The, the risk has not gone away. There still are deaths but it's getting less and less. So any individual's risk is declining as days go by. Thank you for watching.